it is uh, indeed a timely event as uh, tourism has become one of the world's largest and fastest growing industries, providing revenue and livelihood to national economies and the global as well as domestic population. Tourism is very important for Malaysia because it provides employment for more than 2 million Malaysians. And it's also the second biggest foreign exchange earner behind manufacturing. And what is more important, it is sustainable. And it's growing. And of course, the third, uh, why it's important, why tourism is important is because it contributes about 7% to Malaysian economy. And we are the seventh uh, biggest uh, sector contributing towards the uh, GNI of Malaysia. That's why tourism is important and not just important to Malaysia, but I think to all countries in the world. Therefore, I think we all should go uh, as tourists to as many countries as possible because by doing so, we are actually helping the country that we are visiting. So let me begin by sharing with you the latest trend and the importance of tourism as a driver of sustainable economic growth. The tourism sector is indeed a resilient sector. Despite the economic and geopolitical challenges in 2013, the tourism sector has shown remarkable progress. According to the latest UNWTO World Tourism Barometer, international tourist arrivals grew by 5% from 1.037 billion in 2012 to 1.087 billion arrivals in 2013. China, Germany, United States, and Russia remain the largest outbound tourist markets. So keep, keep it up, Germany. Yeah. Um, for 2014, UNWTO has forecasted a growth of 4 to 4.5%. And the future of this industry is definitely looking bright. For example, in Thailand, in spite of the turmoil uh, in that country, uh, Thailand has registered 26 million tourist arrivals in spite of what's happening in Thailand, in Bangkok especially. It actually has beaten us, Malaysia. Uh, we are number 10, according to UNWTO, as the most uh, visited country in the world. But for 2013, we only managed to get 25.6 million tourists. Whereas Thailand has got 26 million in spite of the turmoil. So that is why the future of this industry is definitely looking bright. It is resilient, as what has shown uh, in Thailand. And the UN World Tourism Organization's long-term forecast, tourism towards 2030, has projected an average annual growth of 3.3% of international tourist arrivals for the period 2010 to 2030. As such, as such, the international tourist arrivals are expected to increase from 940 million in 2010 to 1.8 billion in 2030. It shows the importance of the tourism sector as a powerful driver for development and economic growth. It points to the huge potential of the tourism sector in generating income and foreign exchange earnings, creating jobs, opportunities, and attracting foreign direct investment. In other words, tourism is without doubt an engine for sustainable economic development. Taking cognizance of the importance for Malaysia, now tourism is identified as one of the 12 national key economic areas. In short, it is NKEA, under the Government's Economic Transformation Program, the ETP. 
which aims to propel the country towards becoming a high-income nation by the year 2020. The Malaysian government introduced the Malaysian Tourism Transformation Plan, the MTTP, 2020, to bring this industry to even greater heights and to achieve the target of 36 million tourist arrivals and Euro 37.3 billion receipts by 2020. Several unconventional approaches and ideas have been initiated to develop new innovative products and also to rebrand and value at traditional products. Apart from that, the current policies and strategies are heavily focused in the area on improving and upgrading tourist offerings and services, enhancing connectivity to key priority markets in the tourism sector and to attract future higher yield segment. As we go forward, there's also a need for us to pause and reflect. I believe for the tourism sector to continue to fulfill its role as a driver of sustainable economic growth, we need to rethink its relationship with the present and future global trends to cater to the increasing expectations and needs of tourists. In this regard, we have identified four global mega trends that are influencing how we do business. The first global mega trend is the creation of the global elite. It refers to the increasing number of high income consumers globally who are willing to spend on high end products and higher levels of services. Therefore, several projects related to high end products and services have been planned to cater the need, the need of the high end tourists. As an example, our Honorable Prime Minister of Malaysia just launched the Malacca Gateway. Malacca is one of the states in Malaysia. The Malacca Gateway, a mega tourism project, which will include the development of the largest marina in Southeast Asia, in our historical city of Malacca, to attract tourists who wish to disembark at our port cities. It is hoped that the luxury offerings at the Malacca Gateway will bring in more high-end tourists to Malaysia. The second mega trend is a faster pace of life, which refers to tourists who are looking for a brief getaway from the routine, busy city life and the growing urban congestion. This increases the need for people to find an escapade from city life. And Malaysia is home to some of the most beautiful beaches and islands in the world. CNN has listed three of our pristine islands and beaches. That is the Perhentian Kecil Island, the Juara Beach, and Tanjung Ru as among the top 50 beaches of the world's 100 best beaches. These islands and beaches make a perfect getaway, not just for the locals, but also for international tourists. <coughs> the third mega trend involves selective spending by tourists. This refers to changes in taste of today's tourists who are more selective in terms of their spending. As an example, some tourists may choose to spend more on accommodation while economizing on food. On the other hand, some tourists may look for more specialized holidays that offer deeper experience, whilst others may prefer the traditional leisure form of tourism. What this means for us is that we have to diversify the present tourism products and packages to offer a wide variety of tourism offerings. The fourth mega trend is the rise of the new market leaders such as China, 
India and the Middle East countries. From the tourism perspective, the aim is to attract the high yield tourists from China, India, Middle East countries, and Russia. Therefore, strategies and plans being formulated to enable Malaysia is ready to attract and receive the wealthy tourists from these countries, which will surely bring a greater income to the people who are involved directly or indirectly in this industry. In short, the tourism sector needs to continuously re-engineer and adapt its business model to suit customers' needs and demands. This can be done by ensuring that tourism policies, product developments, product offerings, <coughs> connectivity, and marketing strategies are in tandem with the global trends that are influencing and changing the behavior of future tourists. Taking these global megatrends positively, I have to say that the four global megatrends provide tremendous opportunities for the tourism industry. I have full confidence that Malaysia is on the right track to achieve its 2020 target. The success and attractions have been acknowledged by the Lonely Planet, <coughs> which listed Malaysia as of one of the top must visit countries in 2014. Must visit country in 2014. Malaysia is all geared up to receive 28 million tourist arrivals and USD 23.8 or Euro equivalent of 16.8 billion tourist receipts in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, as Malaysia's experience suggests, the tourism sector can be transformative, not just for the economy, but for the society as well. <clears throat> Our homestay model is a good example where we encourage the involvement of local communities in tourism activities. The homestay experience offers tourists the opportunity to experience for themselves the traditional village lifestyle when they stay with their hosts, which in turn helps to increase revenue and work opportunities for local communities. In 2013, 166 homestays, which offer 4,779 rooms for the tourists, have recorded an income of USD 6.72 million or Euro 4.27 million. Indeed, tourism has been successfully used as a mechanism for the government to enhance the livelihood of the rural population in Malaysia. The principles of sustainability and inclusiveness are embedded in our quest to achieve high income nation status by 2020. In terms of natural endowments, Malaysia is one of the 12 mega biodiversity nations in the world. Hence the proportion, hence the protection of environment and the promotion of responsible travel to fragile and pristine areas are of utmost importance to us. We are also committed to address the issue of climate change and environmental degradation. In this regard, green tourism is an integral component of our development plans. We adopt best practices in sustainable tourism management and uphold the principle that tourism conserves preserves and protects. Once again, the homestay program, for example, underlines the importance of conservation and better environmental management, which in turn, which in turn helps to enhance the image of Malaysia 
in sustainable development. Tree planting program at Homestay is a good example where every visitor plants their own tree to mark their presence in that particular homestay, as well as to support the idea of preserving the environment and further beautifying the landscape of the homestays. To date, 16,733 trees have been planted by the visitors. In this way, we also would like the tourists who have planted the trees to come back in a few years to see how their trees have grown. So in a way, it's uh, enticing visitors to make a repeat visit to Malaysia. Tourism is also a channel for building bridges and linking cultures among the global community. It promotes greater understanding, peace and prosperity. And given the enormous benefits of tourism, Malaysia reiterated our commitment to join UNWTO and WTTC to position tourism in the forefront of the national and global development agenda. On 17 October 2011, Malaysia was privileged to be among the first group of countries to join UNWTO and WTTC in supporting the Global Leaders for Tourism campaign. Malaysia's Prime Minister, the Honorable Datuk Sri Muhammad Najib bin Tun Abraza, joined the UNWTO and WTTC Global Leaders for Tourism campaign when he received an open letter from His Excellency Dr. Talib Rifai, Secretary General of the UNWTO, to acknowledge tourism's key role in delivering more sustained and balanced growth and to prioritize the sector high in the national policies in order to maximize its potential. The open letter <coughs> outlines travel and tourism's value as one of the world's largest generators of jobs, a powerful driver of socioeconomic growth and development, and a key player in the transformation to the green economy. In moving forward, tourism will continue to uphold the principles of sustainability and inclusiveness. Marketing and promotion under the global brand Malaysia Truly Asia Celebrating diversity will be further enhanced to increase tourist arrivals. And tourism will remain a key sector contributing towards Malaysia's quest to achieve high income nation status by 2020. Before I end this speech, on behalf of all Malaysians, I would like to extend my invitation to all present here today to visit Malaysia. As 2014 is Visit Malaysia Year, we also have lined up a long list of festivals to celebrate the year of festivals in 2015. Therefore, we look forward to welcoming all of you to Malaysia. In conclusion, we can contribute towards sustainable tourism and economic growth. Yes, we can do it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. My name is Mats Fritzberger from the Danish Foreign Policy Society. Um, I have a very short question as to, um, um, dear uh, speaker, um, your perception of the potential in ASEAN and I was wondering, can it play any role in the future development of the um, tourism in industries of the of uh, Southeast Asia? Thank you. Thank you. 
Can I, can I answer now? Yeah, OK. Thank you so much for your question. The uh, UNWTO uh, has come out with a report for 20, tourism in 2013 and has shown that the, the Southeast Asian region is the most uh, visited region in the world. Um, and all the countries of the Southeast Asian regions are touristic countries. They are like Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, now Myanmar coming in strongly, uh, Laos, uh, Brunei is slightly uh, not, that, uh, not doing that well because they, they, they are a much smaller country than ours. And uh, in, a, in, in the Southeast Asian region, we are all put under one uh, uh, association of Southeast Asian nation, is ASEAN. We have uh, a structured uh, uh, system in ASEAN whereby every year uh, one of the ASEAN member countries will become host to what we call the ASEAN uh, Tourism Forum. And I was privileged uh, to be uh, the minister who chaired the, the recent ASEAN uh, Tourism Tourist Tourism Forum in Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia. So I chaired the meeting. What it means here is that uh, we are always in constant contact to cooperate and to work together to ensure that our region will remain to be the top region for tourism. Uh, we cooperate uh, instead of compete. Uh, we compete in a very healthy manner. Uh, for example, like uh, somebody asked me uh, uh, a few weeks ago and mentioned that uh, uh, is it to your advantage what's happening in Thailand? I said certainly not. Uh, uh, we we do want we do not want to beggar thy neighbour. We would like to see uh, every member of ASEAN progress um, and move forward because uh, it will only benefit all of us. So it makes no sense and, uh, that you know, one country suffers and then another country should be enjoying or reaping the benefit of their problem. So we work together and uh, we have many uh, packages uh, which uh, involve all the nations in ASEAN. For example, we have a package we call the uh, UNESCO Trail uh, Tourism. Uh, we have many uh, UNESCO uh, recognized sites in South Asia, uh, for example, in, in Malaysia alone, we have got five. In Indonesia, we have Borobudur. In Cambodia, we have uh, the uh, Angkor Wat. So we have worked together to ensure that uh, those who are interested in heritage will not just visit one country, but we have this package where they can travel to Cambodia, they can go to Thailand and come to Malaysia and Indonesia within probably uh, in a matter of uh, 10, to 14, 10 to 14 days. We also have what we call this, the, the beyond tourism. It means that if you fly to Bangkok, you fly beyond Bangkok, maybe to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, maybe to Singapore, or maybe to Jakarta. So uh, to answer your question, uh, ASEAN country members, we work together, we cooperate uh, together and compete in a very healthy manner to ensure that uh, the region will always remain the most sought after destination in the world. You want to? Good, okay, okay. all right, okay. Uh, both my <laughs> Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General said uh, it was a good answer. Uh, it only confirms that uh, they probably get a good report from me. <laughs> Good morning, sir. I'm uh, Taru from India. Uh, sir, uh, what was the primary reason for uh, Malaysian uh, tourism decreasing this year, as you said, in comparison to Thailand? And uh, what oh. is the uh, long-term model that Malaysia is looking for? Because uh, right now, as we know, that uh, a lot of uh, tourists from India come. It's right there. We, we come every six months, probably, if we need a quick getaway. 
So once we have uh, the markets a bit saturated uh, around the Asian region, what is the long-term model that Malaysia is looking for for uh, tapping probably the European markets? Because we have packages and it's uh, quite affordable for us and the distance is also near. So once the, that gets saturated, what is the future plan that you're working on? Okay. Um, first of all, the, the, the first question. We fell behind Thailand uh, because of two reasons. One is the connectivity. Uh, you know the Thai international airlines, they fly almost to everywhere in every part of the world, almost everywhere. And they're just not flying uh, people from the capital city, Bangkok, but even they're flying people from Chiang Mai, from uh, uh, Phuket, and even Koh Samui. Uh, inter international airports uh, were built, and their, their national airlines are flying everywhere. But uh, sad to say, our Malaysian national airlines are closing routes. So it's actually not helping the tourism industry. Because uh, for tourists to come and visit the country, it is very important that it must be a direct flight. Because tourists do not like to, to go to a place where they have to stop over somewhere. So that's one of the reasons uh, why, in spite of the problem, in Bangkok, uh, people from all over the world can fly direct to Phuket, to Koh Samui, to Chiang Mai, without having to go to Bangkok. So that's why you see that, you know, uh, they've done well in spite of the turmoil in their capital city. The second reason is uh, because of our visa regime. Uh, Malaysia is a bit uh, strict in uh, giving out visas. And of course, the UNWTO uh, is working towards you know, easing uh, visa regime for tourists. Yeah? Uh, Thailand, for example, uh, has uh, given a free visa to Chinese tourists. And the numbers uh, have increased from 2 million last year to 4 million. So, you know, but Malaysia still remain with their strict visa regime. So it does not at all help the flow of uh, tourists to our country. So we lost to Thailand because of these two reasons. Uh, with regards to uh, our future plan, in Malaysia, uh, we have a long-term target in 2020 uh, <clears throat> uh, to achieve a tourist arrival of 36 million visitors in 2020 and a receipt of uh, 186 billion uh, ringgit Malaysia. Uh, my Deputy Secretary General is already looking for his uh, <laughs> to calculate, looking for his calculator to calculate what it is in euro. Yeah? So I allow him to do that. Uh, <laughs> and because we have this long-term target and because we have this economic transformation program in our country, we are continuously thinking every year of uh, doing something uh, to boost uh, tourism in Malaysia. Except for one year, we have had always a, at least a 3.3% growth in arrivals. Um, so uh, our plan, we, we, we always, as I've mentioned in my, in my speech, we are all the time thinking. Uh, we, 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 we see what are the trends. I mentioned the four mega trends uh, earlier. And certainly uh, from these mega trends, uh, we will plan our uh, events uh, tailored towards the mega trends. Uh, for this year, <coughs> uh, we have our Visit Malaysia Year, where we organize uh, more than 200 events uh, for visitors to come to Malaysia and to share uh, in our festival and events that we're going to have all the year round. Um, for next year, we have already planned that next year will be the year of festival. Because we are a multiracial country, there are many you know, religious and racial, uh, racial group uh, celebrations. 
And in Malaysia, we celebrate uh, Christmas, we celebrate uh, uh, Diwali, we celebrate Chinese New Year, we celebrate the Muslim uh, 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 New Year. Uh, you, you, any religions that have uh, celebrations or any racial group that have their celebrations in Malaysia, we celebrate them. And we have a national celebration for all these, uh, for this group. So for 2015, we have already uh, organized 2015 to be the year of festival. So again, that is another reason for you to come and visit us again in 2015. Other than that, I think uh, we also we have a bureau, which we call the uh, MySEP, where its function is only to be for international events. And we'll go in strongly. We have the uh, annual conference for doctors. Uh, I think I'm going to invite uh, uh, Mr. Tony Nagabaya to come explain to me about the role played by MySEP in bidding for national, uh, for international events. Anyway, the other reason why I invite him here is to show that Malaysia is truly Asia. <laughs> I'm native. On my left, uh, my Deputy Secretary General oh. is Malaysian of Chinese origin. And it's pretty obvious that the one's going to speak, Tony Nagabaya. <laughs> Tony Nagabaya is not Japanese. No, not Japanese. Tony Nagabaya is Malaysian of Indian origin. So please, Tony. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chief. Uh, just a quick uh, background, I'm, my name is Tony, I'm the General Manager of the Malaysian Convention and Exhibition Bureau. Uh, it was, it's a part of the National Key Economic Area, uh, which was the brainchild of the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Uh, our role is basically to bid for international uh, conferences, uh, trade <coughs> exhibitions and shows to Malaysia, and as well to look at uh, international concerts, festivals, uh, entertainment and lifestyle events. As part of our, uh, our, our objective of KPI is to be the top three uh, MICE destination or business events destination uh, in Asia by 2020. And last year, we brought in approximately 1.9 million business delegates to Malaysia, uh, specifically for, for conferences. Some of the last conf uh, large conferences that we did last year was the World Gas Conference, WGC, which brought in close to 20,000 delegates to Malaysia. And these delegates are high spending delegates. Uh, we did a survey, and uh, an average spend of each delegate is about four thousand five hundred US dollars, uh, excluding flight tickets, because flight tickets goes to their own country. But to the host economy, an average delegate spends four thousand seven hundred US dollars. Uh, and with that, uh, we hope that and it creates a lot of job opportunities in Malaysia in the tourism sector, the service industry, and it also you know uh, helps the, the the economy generate money for the FMB outlets, the hotel, the restaurants, the taxi drivers, and so forth. Yep. So, Chief. Okay. So that's it. All right. Thanks. Yeah, you, you want to say something? Yeah. She doesn't want to be left out. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Uh, just for information, we are also offering a special program. Eh? It is known as Malaysia My Second Home Program. Malaysia it has been voted and has been recognized by International Living.com as one of the top three eh, uh, retirement havens in the world. Malaysia is the only country now that offer a successful applicant, foreign citizens, who fulfill certain criteria, a 10-year social visit pass with multiple entries. That means to say, once you obtain this uh, Malaysia My Second Home program, which is basically a long-stay program, you can come in and out of Malaysia. And just for your information, a lot of people, foreign citizens, are applying for this, uh, this program. We have, as at now, uh, about 23,400 foreign citizens from 123 countries. countries. And uh, just for the record, it is uh, in 2012, we have just only 3,227 participants. But the value of the contribution in terms of the fixed deposit, in terms of the real estate purchase, is almost about more than 200 million euros. Small number, but generate very high income. And this one, we did not even take into account their average daily expenses. What is important is that this program not only provides opportunity for people to long stay or even to retire, but opportunity for people to bring in their children to Malaysia for education. So we are seeing this growing trend, even from Japan. You know, Japanese, uh, initially it was uh, cheaper. 
mostly the very senior citizen coming under this program, 60 years and above. But now we are noticing that because of Malaysia being an excellent education hub, people are now coming in, sending their wives or their grandparents to stay in Malaysia under Malaysia My Second Home program. And this in turn generate a lot of income in terms of the education and some also because of our excellent medical health thing, health services. Thank you. I just, I just want to add what June has just said. The Malaysia My Second Home attracted uh, more than 20,000 uh, applicants from 123 countries. Okay, can you imagine that? And uh, what struck me was that, you know, there are certain countries like Luxembourg, uh, countries like Liechtenstein, uh, Dominica Republic, Dominica Republic, they have got one participant. I was thinking why? Actually, they were former diplomats working in Malaysia. So they learned about Malaysia, they live in Malaysia, and after having uh, retired, they came back. So they are not telling this secret to all of you. <laughs> so these are diplomats. Yes, these are diplomats who have served in Malaysia. Obviously, our best uh, offer will be the climate. It's not going to be uh, cold and gloomy, I'm sorry, like, uh, <laughs> like Berlin. <laughs> the country is warm, average temperature is uh, 33 degrees. You just can put on your slippers. You can sleep on the street without <laughs> feeling, you know, there's no cold there. So the diplomats, they serve in Malaysia and they know this. And that's why after having gone back to their own country, they know about the second, uh, Malaysia Mass Second Home program and they applied for it and they become, uh, you know, uh, 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 participant of the Malaysia Mass Second Home. So for those of you here who have not applied yet, please go to Malaysia, have a feel of what it's like, and then uh, come and see me or June. We'll help to facilitate your application. Eh? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, one, uh, I just would like to add, uh, you, know, uh, you know, on the, uh, the strategic planning for the year 2020, yeah, from now 2020, <coughs> actually we have five themes. Eh? to be implemented uh, under Malaysia Tourism Transformation Plan. Uh, first is uh, affordable luxury. That's why we are now promoting shopping in our country. Uh, at this moment, uh, Malaysia, 2012 and 2013, we, you know, we uh, was uh, recognized as the fourth uh, city, Kuala Lumpur as fourth city in, uh, in, in the world, uh, for the uh, Shop. best shopping uh, city in the world. After New York, Tokyo and London. Yeah, then uh, we have another, uh, you know, initiative, uh, nature adventure. You know very well, Malaysia is very, uh, you know, very. Uh, we have a lot of uh, ecotourism site, nature, and so on. Now we are uh, promoting, we enhance the product so that uh, tourists, especially from this region, Germany, they like uh, to see our ecotourism site. That's why we enhance uh, the uh, product uh, under ecotourism. That's why uh, we have the mega biodiversity hub, yeah? we call it. The another one, uh, of course, uh, already mentioned by the minister just now, international event. We bring a lot of uh, festival to Malaysia event and so on. That's why in 2015, we're going to have the year of festival. Yeah? Uh, as mentioned, uh, another theme, uh, the fourth one is my uh, segment. Uh, it's already explained by Mr. Tony just now. And then another one, uh, our segment is uh, family fund. We are targeting the family to come to our country. That's why most of the, like for, for example, like Middle East, uh, you know, tourists, they come with family. We are providing uh, such as uh, the, you know, theme park and so on. The latest one uh, in Malaysia is the Legoland. This is only, uh, you know, the theme park, uh, Legoland theme park uh, in that region, yeah, in Malaysia. So uh, another one is our homegrown uh, theme park is ICT in Shah Alam. This is our, uh, you know, uh, we, we come up with the light and so on, yeah? And uh, like uh, Madame Tussauds, the carpet, we call it. Uh, so mm. this, is, uh, this will attract a lot of family 
to come to our country. This is what actually we are doing, uh, our planning uh, for the year of 2020. Yeah? All right, thank you. Uh, I'd just like to add further. I'm, I'm pleased that uh, both my Deputy Secretary General are giving uh, very important information. Now, just now he said uh, family. Yeah, we, we in Malaysia, uh, we promote family uh, holidays. It's very important to us. So I hope you, you will not uh, uh, mistook me earlier in my speech. When I mentioned beaches, I meant B-E-A-C-H-E-S. <laughs> yeah? Thank you. Well, I, I have one more question. First of all, I want to say terima uh, kasih. Sama sama. Um, yeah. Um, actually, you were almost answered my question because my question was about uh, you said M Malaysia is uh, very diverse, and I was wondering like how do you promote um, domestic tourism like for for Malaysian citizens? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Malaysian, uh, sorry, uh, domestic tourism. Uh, our our tourist industry, one third of our achievement in terms of receipts or uh, arrivals, movement of tourists, only one third is foreign. Two thirds are domestic tourism. So domestic tourism is very important to, to, to Malaysia. Uh, we have many uh, programs for uh, local or domestic tourists. Uh, we uh, promote what we call Chuti Chuti Malaysia. Obviously, it's meant for Malaysia because you don't know what is Chuti Chuti. <laughs> chuti Chuti means holidays in Malaysia. So, <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> uh, there's also the uh, 1001 packages, yeah? something like the 1001 nights. Uh, so, we have 1001 packages for local tourists again. Um, uh, we have uh, what we call these uh, train, train, uh, train ride packages, and we have uh, also religious uh, uh, packages for all uh, religions, um, you know, uh, adopted by Malaysians. We have all these. So, but uh, probably, don't you want to, to, to add some more? Don't worry. Uh, you are, I'm asking you. Yeah, I think, yeah, okay. Like the uh, minister has mentioned that domestic tourism is equally important. And Malaysians uh, love to go back home because we sometimes we have, because we work five on a five day week, and sometimes uh, on the next day, Monday or on the Friday before that, we have a weekend holiday. And you can be sure our roads are packed with all the people, we call it Balik Kampung, and going back to the, uh, the your respective uh, hometowns. Eh? And this is the way when they are back in the hometowns, we have worked with the uh, tour operators and as well as the hoteliers to come up with uh, more uh, exciting offers. So that means to say when you go back home, you do not just go back and stay in your mother's house. We encourage you all to stay in our local hotels because this in a way generates uh, domestic tourism. Of course, the other one is the government sector support because we government servants also sometimes have meetings, retreats and uh, in the local, in other parts of the city to give our staff an opportunity to know what is Sabah like, Sarawak like, and Sabah Sarawak coming over. So this, in a way, is helping to promote uh, domestic tourism. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, please. Uh, just to tell everyone here, in the past, uh, Malaysia, our weekend, yeah, uh, only uh, Saturday, half day, and Sunday. Yeah? But uh, when we want to promote domestic tourism, that's why government has come up you know, with the uh, a policy two days uh, weekend, yeah, Saturday and Sunday. This is the reason why you actually uh, people uh, Malaysian they can travel, yeah. So they, they can take leave two days and then they can travel in the country. So this is what actually uh, we're planning for domestic tourism also. Yeah? And it's always going back to your mother's house, not your father's house. <laughs> <laughs> See how strong the women are in our country. Yes. Okay. Additional question in the back. Okay. Thanks. Uh, you were painting rather a very positive and a little one-sided picture of tourism in Malaysia. I was wondering what might be the downsides and perhaps problems of visiting your country. Thanks. There are, of course, downsides. Uh, there's no doubt about that. If you go to uh, any country, 
uh, certainly there will be uh, downsides. For example, a friend of mine, or rather, not a friend, he's, he's right here in front of me. He was in Amsterdam, and uh, he got uh, uh, robbed. So in Malaysia too, we have cases like this, what we call the snatch theft and all that. But we always remind our tourists, before they, 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 uh, uh, the tourist agent will inform them that, you know, you have to be careful, uh, there are uh, uh, pickpockets around. These, these, these are the downsides, which I think all uh, touristic uh, cities, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have all this problem in, in, in all cities. So the downside is that, of course, um, uh, I must say here, uh, another downside is our taxi service. Please don't use our taxis. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm advising you, yeah? Uh, because uh, that will spoil your visit to Malaysia because of the behavior of the taxi drivers. Uh, we, we have a long-term uh, solution for this, but it's not been um, introduced yet. Uh, for the time being, uh, you know, we have to advise you that, you know, if you can, uh, you avoid uh, hailing our taxis. I don't really care whether they're going to be angry with me or not. We have been telling them all these years. But uh, we love the tourists more than those Malaysians who try to uh, make it uh, difficult for tourists in Malaysia. So the Malaysians' concern, the, the government's concern is for our tourists. So these are some of the uh, downsides, which I think that you will experience in all other cities too. Uh, I was asked to comment uh, because two uh, days ago, the American uh, embassy came out with a travel advisory saying that, you know, uh, be careful. Because in Malaysia, there are uh, incidents of snatch theft uh, and also, I mentioned snatch theft. So the newspapers uh, called me. I was in Berlin and asked me to comment. I said, there's nothing to comment. I think uh, the American embassy is right to advise the uh, potential tourists coming to Malaysia just to be careful. I think that's OK. There's nothing negative about it. Uh, the Americans are not saying that you shouldn't go to Malaysia. They are just saying that, you know, just be careful. So we are not uh, quarrelsome people in Malaysia. Uh, I wasn't going to uh, hit at the American uh, ambassador. I strongly uh, support him because actually he's encouraging people to come here, but just to be careful. So these are some of the uh, downsides, which I think is being experienced by almost all uh, cities in the world. Thank you.
So thank you very, very much once again, Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister from uh, Malaysia. If we could please have a second round of applause for the minister, please. <laughs>